This is the staircase. Now you can tell I've done a lot of work already on it, but the one thing that's missing that's pretty obvious is that there are no balusters going up the railing. This, you can come right through. Not exactly what you want when you got little kids. So the job for today is, since we painted all the balusters, now this right here is the sample one, since we painted all the balusters, we gotta put them in here, kind of like this. But obviously I'm just not gonna just tack them into the side. That would be tacky. So. Oh no. We're going to. Dad jokes. We're going to cut them at the correct angle so they are vertical, like such. One, two, however many I need, going all the way up. Yeah. So we bought the house here with the staircase right smack dab in the middle. It had floating steps and uh, the railing was really uh, too wide. It apparently is not safe for children. So we didn't like it. It kept us from keeping an open layout in the house. So we decided that taking it out and building a mezzanine in this place would be better. Also, the that walkway with that old tile was just not good. So I removed it all and built this staircase. I used quarter inch ply right there just so we could step on something for the first few weeks that we were living in the house. And later on, I then glued some three quarter inch plywood down, as you can see here, and I built up the mezzanine. The mezzanine is exactly where the staircase used to be. I then continued beefing up the staircase with some sidewalls that were eventually going to hold up all the railing. So here's the drywall work. It's uh, not one of my favorite things to do, but I think it turned out nice. And it gave a good base for us to put white oak on the staircase. We stained it dark because we liked the dark oak contrasted with the white balusters. As you can see, that's the mezzanine area with the white balusters and how they look up there. Also, the staircase is covered now with steps that match the flooring on the first floor and second floor and i also put a white skirt along the steps to make it look nice hi guys i just wanted to explain how we got to the point here of how we got to the final product of the balusters in total i think these short balusters are only about 15 of them but it took a little while to get to it so i started off with two by two pine select pieces. The reason I chose pine is because it's going to get painted and poplar was three times the cost. Now I needed to mill them down because construction quality cuts just wasn't going to work for us in the staircase. It needs to be prettier than that. So I milled it down to inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. The reason I chose that specific dimension is because the railing has a notch on the underside and which is happens to be inch and a quarter wide. So I made it so that the footing of the railing would also be inch and a quarter wide. But a square cross section really is kind of ugly, or at least we didn't like it. So I wanted to make it into a different shape. So I came onto this piece and I'm showing you the in-between. I took a square cross section to an octagonal cross section, eight sides. How I did that was I put it on a router table and I used a simple plain triangular bit on the router with a stop and uh, another stop on this side. So I just routed each side, twisted it, routed the next side, twisted it, routed the next side. Obviously this one here has been painted a little bit just because uh, I haven't finished this one. So I took these pieces, sanded them down, got them as pretty as I could because after all it is pine. And then I came over to here, I primed it and painted it. Today, we're gonna go ahead and put the last coat of painting. And after we paint it and it dries, hopefully we'll have enough time to cut an angle out of them so that they'll fit directly into the side of the staircase. So here's a sample balancer that I showed you guys earlier. Remember, inch and a quarter, grooved, 
made with a octagonal uh, cross section. Okay, this is what we're gonna do with it. From the factory, the handrail has an inch and a quarter groove on the top, exactly for this purpose. So you can mill, or basically cut the size, that's what mill means. You can cut the size of your pieces of wood at an inch and a quarter wide. I did that same thing when I built in the shoe of the balusters here. I made a groove in it that's inch and a quarter. See, it slides along, slaps right in there, okay? To the exact width of the, of the baluster. Basically what I have to do is, I have to cut them at an angle. And so that you can put that angle into the railing and to the shoe, so that the piece of the baluster ends up being vertical and not angled. So here we are in the process of getting these balusters ready to paint. For the last time, this is like the third coat that we put on them. So what my wife here is doing is that she's getting some fishing string and attaching it to some regular old cheap drywall screws that we put at the top and bottom of every baluster. Uh, the top is basically going to hang the baluster and the bottom screw serves for us to hold onto the baluster and twist it so we can paint all four sides easily. And I guess you'll see that a little bit coming up. It'll probably make more sense. Okay, here's the typical setup that I do when I want to spray paint, especially outdoors. I put everything on top of a surface so I can get myself ready to paint. Here is my beautiful assistant, wifey. She is going to be actually doing the painting today. So we got here the actual paint, like duh. Then you gotta have a little paint opener canny thingy tool. Open it. You can use a screwdriver, but you know what the heck? That opens up pretty nicely. So you just jab it in there and it pulls it right up off the can itself. Good job, babe. You're doing amazing. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah, you might get some paint on you. So I also have a mask here. I like to use a respirator because it really gets any fine particles uh, and it traps them, it won't let them go into your lungs. It's good for COVID too. Yeah, good for COVID. So then we got some eye protection, just any old regular goggles will do. We have two little jugs right there and those jugs serve the purpose of being able to mix the paint and the second one has water in it. The reason you want some water is because when you're gonna be spray painting, you wanna make sure that you thin out the paint a little bit. Since we're using some cabinet, uh, sorry, cabinet enamel, uh, it comes in pretty thick. I got the drill there with the paint mixer set up. And of course, I have the paint sprayer. The manufacturer recommends, the manufacturer recommends 50 PSI coming out. As you can see from the gauge and the, the sprayer itself, the gauge is right now set at about 100 PSI. That's just what's coming in through the hose. The dial on the side of it, as my wife shows, it'll, when you press it, it only comes out at 50 PSI. That's what we want. What's the bucket for? Well, I like to put the can inside the bucket and then start mixing it. That way I don't get paint splattered everywhere when I'm mixing it up. Let's get to it. All right, let's see if I can walk through you guys. So I put the can of paint inside the bucket and I get my drill mixer and I mix the paint. The reason I like to do that is because I know that as I try to clean off that mixer, I can just simply pull it up and turn the drill to high speed and all the paint will get splattered on the inside of the bucket. I don't have to worry about splatter. Simply pull out the paint can, always you're going to get some paint on your fingers, pour it into your mixing cup there get some more paint on your fingers because why not nice and mixed put a little bit of water i give a little pre-mix right there and like the rebel that i am i get the drill i put it on low speed and instead of putting it inside the bucket i just mix it up right there again low speed to then get the consistency that i want I then put it back inside the bucket, turn it to high speed so I can get all that extra paint off. All right, so this is the point where I'm going to now put the paint inside the sprayer. I have my wife hold up the filter right there for me as I put the paint 
through the filter to get it inside the cup. I try to make careful to get all the paint in. And then I actually, I think I had to lift up. Oh, yep, I did. She had to lift up here the filter to make sure that the paint all got inside there out of the filter. Another good thing that bucket is for is I can simply just throw that filter away inside of it, not worry about the immediate cleanup of it. So covered it and then got a second opinion on that tightness and then I just tested it out. Seemed like it was working great. As I mentioned before, we put a screw at the bottom of each baluster so that we could hold on to the screw, twist the baluster without affecting the paint on the wood itself. Notice how she is starting the sprayer above the baluster itself and she's going through the whole length. That's why she's using that glove there so she doesn't get paint on her hands. This will be the final product of all the balusters going up that diagonal underneath the railing. What has already been done is I put the same type of railing here and the same type of balusters up on the mezzanine. As you can see, this is the final product for the mezzanine, but it's gonna look like this going up and down that diagonal, cat not included. Okay, now we have to scribe this angle onto each baluster. The way I like to do it is I get a little doohickey called a T-bevel. A T-bevel is kind of like a square, but it's adjustable. See? So what I do is I kind of tighten just a little bit, just make it snug, such that this arm won't fall. It'll just kind of stay. Put it back there in the corner, and I put it up against the newel here. I'll just slide it straight down until it reaches the bottom of the groove of the shoe. Once that's in there, nice and neat, I don't see any light coming through here or on the bottom, I lift it up carefully and tighten the bevel as much as I can without moving this uh, metallic arm. I check it, if it's the right angle I need, then it's great. Now, transcribing it onto the balusters is pretty easy. All I gotta do is slide up the bevel up to wherever I want to scribe that line and draw a pencil line on it. Now, you might be thinking, well, I don't have a T-bevel. First of all, these T-bevels are maybe only $15 at almost any box store, the big box store. The good news also is that if you really don't want to buy one because let's say you're never going to use it again, you can just use a piece of cardboard. That's right. Just cut a square of cardboard and then keep on cutting at an angle slowly until you find the right angle. Then just use that piece of cardboard to carefully draw onto each baluster the angle that you need. So we have our bevel here. Like I mentioned, we wanted to scribe this angle into the pieces of wood. The good news is that this angle is the same as this outer angle too. So what I do is I set this up against my uh, saw here and I can adjust the saw, of course, to the angle that I need. So you wanna make sure that it just slides right down nice and clean so you get this right angle. And once it does, you tighten it up. So what I like to do is I like to put some painter's tape on any edge that I'm gonna be cutting, um, especially if it's pine, it's real soft and has a tendency to have chipping. So after this cut, I actually replace the blade for a finer tooth to get a little cleaner of a cut. Reason being is after I made this cut, there was a little bit chipping than more than I wanted. And uh, luckily for me, the groove in which this baluster fit in uh, hid the chipping that did show up. See right there, I'm not too happy with it. 
but at least two sides came out nice and pretty. Well, we're back here, back at the staircase. So we're gonna put in the balusters right here. As you can see, I already put one chip here at the bottom, and I also got one chip here at the top in the handrail. So these chips are cut uh, at, a, at the angle that is this angle here. That's the good news about uh, reciprocity of angles. You can you don't have to reset your miter saw in order to get the right angle cut in. So we already have the baluster set up, cut on both sides. All we have to do is slide it into the bottom there and fit it into the top. Once you have that there, the most important thing you gotta do is check for level. And yes, we're level. I'll show this on a different angle too. Then, two more chips. We'll glue those down and nail them. Then, we put in the next one after you glue it down and nail it. You check for level again, and you're good to go. So as I mentioned, this is the different angle we're gonna get. So, again, we have our baluster cut, nice to size. Sit it at the bottom, get it in the top. The most important step here, before you do anything else, is to make sure that it's level. We'll go ahead and get that level on there, make sure that bubble's right in between the two lines, and it is. Then, once we're at that secure, then we can go ahead and start continuing the process. One chip on the bottom. We'll glue that down and put a little brad nail through it. One chip on top. Again, same thing, glue, a little brad nail. And then we get the next baluster. Fit it in, check for level. We're good to go. Yes, I did check the level of every baluster after I put them in. After all, if they're not perfectly vertical, you really will notice something like that from a distance. There I got one of my bosses making sure that I'm doing a decent job. She's learning how to skate. And why inside the house? Well, why not? Now you're probably thinking, dude, this is not a DIY project. And you know what? You are absolutely right. It is not. This is not for someone who wants to start learning how to use power tools. I'm very familiar with many different types of power tools. I know how to use them. I know how to be safe with them. And uh, I guess I have a decent eye for this type of thing. But uh, this channel isn't just about DIY. It's kind of seeing what we do and how we've lived through this remodel of ours. We are super happy as to how this ended up turning out. We really like uh, how the colors contrast with each other and we really enjoy the look. It's a good thing too, because it's going to be in our house for a long time. While I can't tell you exactly how much this cost, I can tell you that I spent a total of maybe $4,000 with all the materials. All the oak, all the pine, all the plywood, everything. Whereas we had gotten quotes when we first moved in to have someone else do this. And the staircase alone, and I mean just the bare staircase, not the pretty pine balusters or, or the oak railing, that was quoted to us at about $14,000. Um, I think for $4,000, I think I did a pretty good job. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps YouTube advertise this to other people. Thanks for watching.